Yeah, excellent. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Um, a bit of a sort of a different session. Um, it's not about a package uh, I develop or about something that is, is brand new. Um, I think the purpose of this session is for those that probably haven't used R in the past and um, are implementing um, HTA or cost effectiveness studies um, and stumble on uh, um, missing data problems. Uh, I think this session is just to clarify some of the areas that I thought, given my experience at uh, doctoral and postdoctoral level, about why um, you would use R for, for missing data. Um, so I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on the code, just because in every paper I publish, um, I tend to, um, to generously um, uh, provide the code. Um, I will touch on one or another aspect, but, but most of the code will be detailed in, in the papers that are at the end of the slides. Um, so that you're very happy to, um, to, to have a look and, and let me know. So I will cover, um, and, and just because this session is, is, is different from the others that we had so far, I'm going to cover missing data issues in HTA, but only using uh, patient level data, so no modeling. Um, and I'm going to try to highlight three settings in, in 15 minutes or so. Um, where I thought um, R really helped me, although I, I'm generally an R user, I thought it was crucial to, to my work to use R. Um, so I won't talk about uh, things related to missing data problems in modeling studies or um, evidence synthesis based on aggregate data. Um, and I'm not going to cover all the R package that you could possibly use to, uh, to uh, handle missing data, but only those that were mostly useful or relevant to uh, cost effectiveness analysis and hopefully will complement nicely with uh, what Andrea Gabriel will present in, um, in the session after this. Right, so the first setting uh, and one that I start um, dealing with during my PhD is about hierarchical studies. So in, in, um, is one of those um, structures that is very common in, in cost effectiveness analysis, uh, where there is a multinational, multi-center, a cluster uh, study that um, you have to conduct your economic evaluation. Um, and then the, the central point is that the missing data must uh, acknowledge that hierarchical structure as you would do in your substantive model, okay? So, and the reason for that is that um, uh, the probability of uh, observing the data is likely to be correlated within the group, within the cluster, within the site, um, for example, a GP practice. Um, both because the patient characteristics, they're more likely uh, or more similar within groups, and also because there will be some site level characteristics like data collection efforts that will make it um, more similar within, uh, within group. Um, and uh, I've shown that and, and I leave that to, um, for you to, to have a look at the references. I've shown in, in many examples that um, if you fail to, to incorporate that clustering, uh, you not only get imprecise estimates, as you would expect by uh, not incorporating correctly the, the hierarchical structure, but you can actually get biased results if, if uh, <clears throat> for example, within a trial, um, the cluster, uh, the size of the cluster or the group uh, is informative, i.e. Um, is related differentially um, between treatment arm with a, with a outcome or the cost. Um, so you can actually get, get bias. Uh, and so what, what I did in, in this area was just to step from a sort of non-hierarchical uh, multiple imputation model um, to a, a multi-level one. So I think th this was obviously back in, in 2010 or 2011. Um, and then th there wasn't such a thing as, as multi-level MI. So th there was something that I... Uh, I invested a, a bit of 
time on it. Um, there was already obviously a lot of Bayesian hierarchical models that could um, uh, swiftly uh, address all the, the missing data um, in, in a cluster study. Um, but is you know you know that the applied user in in HDA you not always use uh, Bayesian uh, analysis so and 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 MI um, tended to be something um, they preferred so so we invested a little bit on multi level MI um, and you know you can have a, a look at this paper we published in the medical decision making um, and and we applied uh, the multi-level MI to this maternity study, which was a cluster trial, um, and and had a sort of characteristic typical of a cluster trial, like few clusters, very high correlation within clusters, and and this cluster was a bit sorry, this trial was a bit unusual that it didn't have any missing data. So what we did was actually okay. So we simulated some scenarios with using a realistic study. And we, we just demonstrated, as you, as you can see, one of the scenarios on the right hand side, uh, we just demonstrated that um, only the multi-level MI could uh, approximate the true value, i.e. the fully observed data, um, and, and the others wouldn't, um, either because of, of uh, imprecise estimates or also um, uh, some slight bias in the results. So why are? Um, many reasons for R. So the, the first is that implementing multi-level MI outside R is really a pain in the neck. Um, it either requires a specialist software, and I, I, I say that because <clears throat> I use other packages as well for, for my work, and then so I have a, a good sense of um, the relative merits. Um, and outside R, you, you could use uh, re real com impute, which is a macro for MLWIN. And if you don't know what MLWIN is, is it's just a specialist software for multi-level modeling. Um, you can call real com from Stata, but it, it generally is prone to uh, to issues. So um, difficult SARS uh, also difficult to to do um, th this type of modeling. And we can do that very, very easily in, in, uh, in R. And there's many package. Um, the, the one we started with was PAN because it was building on a, a proper multivariate um, uh, uh, mix model. Um, and so we, we started with that. But actually, the more general one is, is the MICE, which is equivalent to the MI impute in, in Stata, um, which does. Um, which is primarily a chained equation approach, but then uh, with time, um, now everything can be done in mice. We can do pan in mice, we can do JOMO, which is a more recent package to handle uh, different kinds of joint hierarchical models, mixed uh, uh, outcomes, binary, ordinal. Um, and But you can do everything in mice, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so, so, so a lot of flexibility, um, and then you can also um, easily uh, conduct Bayesian um, uh, models using R, and I think Andrea is going to talk a bit more about the, the missing HE um, package. Um, so, so, it, so it's a natural platform for that. So quick example, and again using mice, um, is... is um, it's pretty easy. Uh, all the code that you need is probably in this page. So you, as, as in state, uh, it is always a good idea, although you don't have to do that. It's a good idea to prepare the data to tell, um, to, to organize in a way that um, then you're going to tell um, R um, which ones are the predictors, i.e. The, the ones that are going to explain. Um, the missing data, the cluster is defined as a minus two. Um, variable, so you sort of have to tell uh, R uh, which variable corresponds to. So you have the predictors, uh, you have the cluster indicator, and the, the zero is the variable that you want to impute. In this case, it's a very simple example that say that we want to impute um, this this quality, um, and then and then the total cost I'm going to use as a predictor. Then the cluster is minus two, and then the rest of the variables are just our predictors. Um, and then it's, it's just a line of code with a number of imputations, uh, the data that we just organize above, um, and then the methods. 
And with the method, uh, although we use 2L pan because it is this uh, proper um, uh, multivariate mix model based on Schaffer's work, um, we, we could use a, um, a chained equation, uh, which is a 2L norm. Um, a 2L bin is, is based on mixed models for, for um, discrete um, variables. We can apply JOMO, as I said, which is a much more complete uh, multivariate or joint hierarchical uh, multiple imputation package. Um, or you can even only impute at the, the, the level two, so at the cluster level. So imagine that for some reason, it's not very often, but for some reason you have a, a missing covariate and that covariate is at the cluster level, which don't tend to, to, to happen in, cluster, in trials, but it could happen in other studies. So you can actually use a, a model that only imputes at the, or, or imputes directly. Um, at level two, uh, not at level one, which is the patient, okay? Right, second, second setting um, <clears throat> is about joint modeling. And, and uh, you all know joint modeling is, is really central to uh, um, HDA, um, not the least because uh, at the very minimum, we, we want to uh, um, jointly estimate cost and outcomes. Um, they can be um, uh, useful in other settings. And one of, of those settings is um, something that is increasingly uh, being um, or, or receiving attention in, in, in HDA, which is individual patient data meta-analysis. Um, and, and there's many advantages, which I'm not going through in detail of, of conducting an IPD meta-analysis. Um, but one of, of the, the relevant ones for, for this work is we, we can actually do a better job at addressing missing data. And, and that's um, uh, the topic for, for these uh, couple of slides that I put together. So this was some work I did with, uh, um, with, with FDA when I was in Harvard doing my postdoc. Um, and what they ask us to do is, okay, we have these five RCTs, we, we've got the data, um, we just want to do a, a proper evidence synthesis um, to, to compare for comparative effectiveness of, of these um, cardiac devices. And this was a resynchronization versus resynchronization plus some um, defibrillator. Um, and, and, and then the, one of the big problems, and that's where I, I sort of um, went in, is that they had lots of missing data. So they had some studies where, and these were the five outcomes they were interested in, mortality, they have some uh, um, at New York uh, uh, class um, score, which is used a lot in, uh, in uh, cardiovascular diseases. They have this functional uh, outcome, which is the number of meters walked in six minutes, and they have quality of life, which is uh, very familiar to health economists. So they have the, this bunch of outcomes. Some of them, they were complete, like mortality for some of the studies. Some of them, they were partially complete. And quality of life, for example, uh, was, was actually missing for the whole study, um, which we call systematically missing uh, data. Um, so, so there was a lot of missing data. In the end, I think we had only 50% uh, observed uh, uh, complete cases, as we call it. Um, so in this case, what we, we did was to, uh, uh, to, to, to use this joint hierarchical model. We use uh, JOMO for this and then Bayesian analysis as well. And then this is, is the, the, something that you're probably familiar, a joint hierarchical model using some latent um, a uh, latent formulation where the, the each um, discrete variable follows a, a normal distribution, and then we we estimate it with jointly with uh, with your continuous uh, variables in in a joint uh, multivariate model. Okay, um, <clears throat> so and then we did some extra work to to compare. Um, something that hasn't been done actually, not not in economics or, or statistics, which was we, we knew that uh, chain equations and um, multivariate imputation should lead to the same results, and, and there were some studies. Uh, there were some studies um, uh, proving that, but within the hierarchical setting, uh, it wasn't really clear where the chain equations. And this was one of the reasons why actually 
um, state that hasn't uh, included a, a multi-level approach because it wasn't clear whether the chain equations was actually doing a proper job at accounting for the clustering. So we did some, some work to try and understand whether the, 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 the joint hierarchical multiple imputation was uh, performing similarly to the chain equations that include some random effects. Um, and then we found that um, the, the, obviously the joint hierarchical model is, is the, the, the correct one if the distribution assumptions are correct. And then the chain equation so full of a little bit through the cracks, both in terms of coverage and, and bias that I, I don't show here. Um, so it seems that, you know, that there's something, and what we suspect the problem was, is that the correlation at the study level, so the correlation between all the outcomes, um, or between the, 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 the outcomes at the, the, um, the study level, so level two, is not properly uh, uh, accounted for in the chain equations that includes random effects, okay? Um, and so the, I would recommend more in general uh, to use some, some joint hierarchical models, and, and you would do that um, if you use uh, either JOMO package or a Bayesian analysis, uh, if that's um, the type of analysis that you're doing. So what, again, why are, um, and this was back in 2013, and at that time you couldn't even use a multivariate normal MI in Stata, okay? Now you, you can use the, the option MI impute VF, uh, MVN, but at the time you can do, you could only do chain equations, okay? And as we've seen in, in the previous slides, we, we couldn't do clustering either. So again, you would have to resort to real common impute macros, okay? But actually, um, given that we, we, in this type of studies, we will have a, a mixture of continuous and discrete variables, um, the, the flexibility of some package like JOMO is, is definitely very important um, to properly account for the missing data, okay? And, and, and it brings, in the specific um, IPD meta-analysis context, it brings further flexibility, um, which is outside the missing data realm, but, but you know, bringing the data together from the different studies, uh, implementing Bayesian methods for evidence synthesis, which is an obvious thing to do. So all those things uh, together, they, they make R as, as probably the, your top priority um software to use um and and while accounting for for the missing data um how am i doing with time just uh I got, well you had two minutes two minutes ago so okay very yeah two minutes is fine thank you um I had two minutes, two minutes ago, so just wrap up quite quickly I'm sorry. okay gosh um 20 minutes gone cheers um, so, um, so, so the third setting, and I'm going to leave it to you to, uh, um, be, because there's really detailed um, R code in uh, in uh, all the examples that we, uh, all the papers that we published. Um, but in terms of MNAR, I think Andre is going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, either using selection models, which usually involve estimating the missing date and analysis model jointly, um, and you can do that in, in many ways, um, you, using even MI, copular vision, uh, econometric approach such as the Ekman selection model, or if you adopt a pattern mixture model, which is sort of uh, allowing differences between the distribution of observed and unobserved data, um, R is the place to go, okay? And, and if you look at um, all these reference, Laurent, Mason et al. 2018 and Mason et al. Um, 2021, there's plenty of R code that, allow, that shows the flexibility of, uh, of R in implementing all these uh, sort of more complex um, studies that can um, methods that can address uh, MNAR data in cost effectiveness analysis. Thank you. That's great, thank you very much. Um, 
maybe we can have uh, questions on both at the end. Um, and Drea, if you'd like to, well, Manuel, if you stop sharing your screen and then Andrea yeah. can share slides. Yes. Okay, thank you. Try. Mm. Should be able to see now. Tell That's me if, perfect. If there's any problem with my audio or my video, please let me know. Otherwise, I can start. So thank you very much, Manuel. And also, thank you very much for inviting me here. Very, it's a pleasure to be here. So I will take your offer and follow up on all the m &ER analysis um, with a bit of code. Uh, I know this second section missing data, so people, probably people will get kind of bored, but hopefully I can entertain you a bit. So what I talk about today is my package, Missing a Cheat which is specifically uh, dedicated to deal with missing data for health economic evaluation. So as Manuel, I will mostly focus on individual level data. So very briefly, since I have a <coughs> little of time, I will give you first a very introduction, what kind of analysis problem that of course, most of you will be familiar with, and a focus on why missing data is such a problem. And then I'll, go, I'll dive into why I think the package could provide some usable tools for you, this type of analysis that you can use show you a brief application on the case study, and then wrap up with some conclusions. So um, the type of level data, individual level data, so it's some, some type of data that you collect, for example, from an RCT, from a clinical trial, which would look something like this. For example, you have your utilities or HR pool data collected at different time points and the cost as well uh, on different individuals in different groups of the trial. And then what it typically is done is we, as also Manuel mentioned before, we typically work on qualities and total costs, which is, are computed over the time period of the, of the trial. For example, use the error under the curve approach for calculating qualities. And after we uh, aggregate these variables, then we fit our models to these variables. Um, we, there are many choices. Here, are just a very simple example. We can use linear regression, and then we can estimate the parameter, which is associated with the mean difference in the qualities or cost between the different groups that we are interested in. And after we also need to do the extra step, uh, which is typical for HTA, that is we don't want only the estimate, we want also to quantify the uncertainty around the estimate. And this, for, for doing this, many people typically use the bootstrapping. So the idea is that you fit the model and then you generate uncertainty as a, secu as a separate step. And this has some advantages, but also some uh, potential drawbacks in the fact as also Manel was saying, if your main model you have multi-level structure, then also the structure should be taken into account the way you generate the bootstrap samples. Otherwise, you may get incorrect results. So it's a very tricky situation sometimes. So why um, the situation can even get worse when the model complexity is increased to account for specific aspects of the data, such as we want to account for the correlation between the costs or the effectiveness. There are methods available to do so, such as similar root regression or joint modeling, uh, or we, we can also have to deal with normality, especially in small samples. Um, for example, we can use generalized modeling or what has been defined as hard or two-part regressions, especially if your data are particularly skewed. And then, of course, we have the problem of missing data, which almost never occurs. Um, however, unlike the previous two situations, for missing data, there is no actual general solution, which, is, which holds for all possible cases. The real thing is that we typically, uh, any assumptions we make uh, is something that we cannot check from the data. And therefore the most reasonable assumption would be not to focus on a single scenario, but to uh, make explicit assumption what could be the different reason why we have these missing values. And talking about missingness, so there are three important questions I think we have to take into account before doing any analysis. So how much missingness do we have? So if it's very, negligible amount, then perhaps any kind of method will not actually lead to uh, a substantial change. So we can kind of, uh, we are kind of okay with this. But if we have substantial missingness, then we, we have to say, okay, which variable? So it's, it is an outcome missing, it is missing in the predictors. And this question um, have a huge impact also on the validity of the method that you want to implement. And finally, of course, the most challenging is why we have missingness. Most of the times we are not aware why this occurs. Um, so the general approach we typically, which is typically recommended is to make an assumption of the process that leads to these values to be missing. This can be encoded in the classical Ruby taxonomy in the different classes of missingness, such as missing complete at random, missing at random, missing not at random, depending on what uh, kind of values missingness depends upon. 
I will not focus too much on this as I don't have much time, but this is kind of standardized way to represent the assumption that we have about missingness. So something which is always certain in any type of this type of analysis is that we cannot make, we cannot test any kind of assumption because the data are not observed. So it makes sense that we don't only restrict ourselves to a single scenario for our analysis because we can never check those assumptions. So the, the, the ideal strategy would be to define a range of assumptions that we think are plausible and then check if our results are robust across these different assumptions. For example, many people tend to choose MAR as their base case scenario. And then, for example, do complete case analysis as a sensitivity. However, in my personal opinion, I think this is not really helpful in most of the cases, as if you think MAR is more reasonable, for example, using MI, then complete case analysis does not really represent a plausible alternative scenario. What could be more interesting instead would be, for example, to explore some MNER departures from R. Of course, this requires to make some assumption, and these assumptions have to be made based on information which cannot come from the data. For example, you talk to some experts, people who know the people involved in the trial, so they can suggest what kind of possible scenario that could be about the reason why we have these missing values. Again, the objective is define a set of assumptions and check if our results are robust across these uh, assumptions. So in my package, I will implement um, Bayesian models to uh, deal with this problem. So again, you can use also MI as an alternative. I will just focus on Bayesian. This is the typical approach I will use for this type of analysis. And for MNER specifically, we have two main type of approaches, which also Manuel mentioned before. Uh, the idea is always we want to model the joint distribution of our outcomes, so cost and effectiveness and missingness but depending on how this joint is factorized, is expressed, then we, can, we have the two different approaches. So patch of mystery models, so as also as I said, the idea is that we want to fit the model within each missingness pattern and then retrieve the overall estimate across the patterns. Or selection model, where instead we want to make some explicit assumption on what kind of form has this, uh, the missingness mechanism. In theory, there's also a third category, shared parameters model, which can be considered as a sort of a special case or one of the previous two, but I will not focus on this as these are not covered by the package. So uh, what, how can we assess MNER within these two approaches? I will not again, not focus too much on the details, just to give you the intuition, and then I'll show you how this implement in the package. So for selection models, the idea is that we can change the distribution for our outcome, or we can change the form for our missingness mechanism. And this way we can express different assumptions. While in pattern mixtures, the idea is that first we have to decide what kind of restriction we have to impose to the models in order to be identified. And after that, we have to specify also informative priors on what we call sensitivity parameters. So some parameters which are used to capture how much we depart from our mark, for example. So these type of models uh, are implemented in MISNG, which is uh, currently available on CRAN. And here I just give you a very brief overview of the idea of the package. Okay, so we have a general um, framework where we have three general functions, selection, pattern, which implemented the models that I described before, or hardware, which implements hardware models, which I will talk about in a, in a couple of slides with, uh, with the application to the case study. So the missing HE implements all these kind of models using JAGS through the R package called r 2 jags so all models are implemented in JAX in the background, so you don't have to specifically know the, how to code the model in JAX, but if you just know how to deal with the package, then the, the model will be fit to use the based on software. So let's say, for example, if you want, a, a want to fit a selection model, so there is a bunch of information that the user can provide, for example, what kind of outcome distribution I want to assume, what kind of missing assumption I want to make, and then some details about the Markov chain model or algorithms, for example. For example, again, Let's say that I want to fit a normal distribution for my qualities, but then I want to fit the gamma distribution for my cost because they are skewed. And at the same time, we can also take the kind of correlation because we are in a Bayesian framework. This is, can be done in a relatively simple way. We can also include covariates in each of the modules if you think these are relevant. And after we specify the model for our outcome, then we want to specify, because we are in a selection framework, the model for our missingness. For example, you can think that age could be a covariate that can affect our missing probability. So I want to include in our logistic regression. Uh, and if, I, if then I want to assume MNER, for example, for qualities, then I also have to specify the dependence of qualities on missingness. 
So this is captured by this parameter here represented as delta, delta E, um, which of course has to be assigned an informative prior. By default, missing a cheese uh, specifies standard normal, but then the user can customize this, for example, using um, the, by creating your own list, which contains the object delta dot prior dot E, and then includes the hyper prior values that you want to override. For example, this way we override the standard normal with the normal with mean five and standard deviation one. And then we can pass all this information to the selection function, which will then fit the model and save it into, in a, into an, our object. After we fit the model, we have a, a set of functions to assess the results. Standard, standard functions just print to print the posterior summaries of our mean qualities and costs in each group, for example. Plot function to see um, how the missing values were imputed in terms of, 90, for example, 95% credible intervals and point estimate. And after we check the model, what we can do is to see the convergence of the algorithm. We have, we have the diagnostic function to check whether there was some potential issue with the convergence, or we can also generate information criteria to check the model fit to observe data. And finally, we can also post-process the output of the of missing HE in order to generate our standardized cost-effectiveness uh, output, such as cost-effectiveness suitability cure. Uh, this, for this uh, uh, function containing the package BCA are very useful. You can get curves or planes in, directly from the output of the missing HE model. So very briefly, since I don't have much time, uh, we'll go through the case study. So this is a main trial, a pilot RCT, evaluating the cost of a new intervention in the area of, uh, in the area of, of STI. Thank you. And, and then, we, for example, here we have yeah, H, um, HR call data and costs collected at different time points of the trial over one year. And here I just reported the proportion observed data uh, at the, for each group for each time point. And you can see the number of complicated is relatively small, suggesting that in this case, missingness could have a potential huge impact on our results. So uh, there are different um, there are different models that can be fit, and these actually can be fit using missing HE. Here, I just give you some very brief example. So let's say that they want to start with the bivariate normal distribution, for example, and between the cost and qualities, which is just kind of standard. But then I can simply uh, change the distribution, and then I want to assume a beta for my qualities and the gamma for my cost, because I want to account for skewness. And this can be easily done, while also account for the correlation within the Bayesian framework. Or even you can also explore more advanced models, such as hardware models, where the idea, again, very briefly, is that you consider your data as split into two parts, a part associated with the uh, individuals associated which are have a, is, um, a value equal to a specific uh, number, for example, individuals associated with the perfect F status of one quality after one year. You have many of these individuals in, in your data set, which causes a lot of skewness in your data. So we split your data into those who are associated with these ones and all the others. And then you do a similar approach to selection model. That is, you try first to estimate the probability of being associated with these structural values. And then you can also try to model the, out, the distribution of all the other remaining individuals. For, all, for example, all the others with a quality less than one, you can model with the beta distribution. Or then you can model them the gamma distribution for the cost. So a kind of complex model, but takes into account these aspects of the data. And in addition, as I mentioned before, hardware models can also be uh, extend in order to account for MNER. What, what it can be done is essentially, you can make an assumption about if there is a missing quality, you can make an assumption whether this quality could be a, a structural one or an, any other value. Um, this information can be provided directly to the model. Let's say, for example, MNER1, I assume that all missing individuals are associated with a perfect F status, or MNER2, none of these are, or a combination of these individuals across different, the different treatment groups. And in the end, I can summarize the results again here, just in terms of cost of ethnic curves. Each curve is associated with a different model. And the key message from this is simply that if you just restrict to a single assumption about missing, you can see that you can miss uh, the world picture. Um, and you can uh, essentially be induced to say that there is, the intervention is cost effective, when in fact, you can see how uh, there is a lot of uncertainty. So just to wrap up um, with some conclusions. So individual level HDA data are subject to a lot of problems, complexity, which need to be addressed, including missingness. We, missing HE implements a Bayesian approach 
as, it, as a sort of flexible way to deal with this complexity while also generating uncertainty in a consistent way with the model that you fit. Um, it also allows to explore MNER using informative priors, which are a very powerful tool in this context. Um, it is also a work in process, something that I'm working on to extend the models which are currently available in MCNC that we can fit to these qualities and costs at the longitudinal level. The reason essentially because qualities and costs are computed, as I, show you, as I showed you before, based on longitudinal level data. So we can have the models implemented at the qualities or at the utility level. And whenever we have missingness, it is arguably um, more intuitive to fit the model at the longitudinal level, because in this way you can retain all kinds of evidence that you have in your trial to make your ass missingness assumption more robust. Final slide. So to wrap up, Missing HE is a package which allows to fit Bayesian models. You don't need to know how to code the Bayesian models as Missing HE will do this for you, but of course you are willing to take on the challenge and try to learn. This is always very helpful in case you want to adapt the model based on your specific needs outside the package. Uh, you can post-process the output of the model to generate your standard CA output. And there are currently available a series of guidelines on how to fit each function, to learn what kind of each function does in the form of vignettes, which are available in CRAN. There is also a full uh, instruction in terms of uh, within the L files for each function in the package which can help you. There is a short course on my GitHub page and also the full code of the, the package is available on my GitHub page, as well as also on CRAN. So this concludes my presentation. So thank you very much for your time. And again, if there is any question, I would like to take it. Thank you, it's really interesting. We have a couple of minutes if anyone wants to put a question in the chat or raise their hand if they want to ask in, in person. Can I just make a quick remark, which maybe will be picked up even later on in the in the further discussion. I think obviously um, it's no surprise that I agree with essentially everything that Andrea just said. Uh, the only comment I would make is that uh, these kind of packages, and obviously um, he's been working on this with the specific uh, objective of facilitating the work for the practice, the practitioners and the modelers so that they don't have to worry about writing up their code. But it is fundamental. Unfortunately, there's no free lunch. So I think a modeler who uses these kind of tools, not just in terms of a Bayesian analysis, they need to understand what's going on. So maybe they don't need to exactly rewrite the code all the time. But there should be a, a, an effort in having an understanding. And I know, Andrea, you've, you've mentioned this, but um, I think that's fundamental. They, they, these, these tools cannot become complete black boxes. Otherwise, I don't think we're doing ourselves um, a favor. No, yeah, I totally agree with you, John. Um, I think it makes sense that we help people to learn um, first and then so that, that they can implement the model themselves. Uh, I think the package can help like the first start if they want to approach and they're not sure, but then of course it would be good if they actually learn. Um, and it was also for me like this, so I think this is the correct way. Sure. I may, I may be um, boring, but perhaps I can ask a question to my colleague Manuel, if he doesn't mind, as a missing data colleague. So. And again, this is something that I'm not sure about. You mentioned Jomo and MICE, which are very, very useful, very powerful packages in R. Um, do you know, to your knowledge, um, because I'm, I'm not updated about this, how much this kind of packages with multiple reputation can deal with non-normal distribution? Uh, for example, while also taking into account the clustering. Is it something which is kind of a bit more or something that you have to code up yourself still? Um. No, you wouldn't. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about non Gaussian continuous uh, um, variables. Uh, no, I think that the, um, the focus, um, given that it was developed from someone on, on the biostats um, setting, they, they focus on discrete and continuous, but all within the, the, the multivariate. Um, normal um and, and i think i think you know if you want to go uh that then, then the bayesian framework is is quite useful um I, I, in the past i tried uh copula modules because they they can also um allow for non-gaussian um if you don't want to go bayesian but 
but yeah, um, there's there's always trade-offs, isn't it? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think again, if I can um, be annoying as usual, um, you, you guys know my feelings, and I think that missing data is one of those things which fundamentally is is a Bayesian thing, you know, and. Um, I, I think anecdotally, even the, the whole business with missing um, multiple imputation is kind of a hybrid thing because it, it's done thinking in a Bayesian way, but doing in a frequentist way, because when, when Rubin implemented it, well, that, that just wasn't around any MCMC that he could use. And so he was doing it in a way which is kind of different than the way he was thinking about it. But yeah, I guess as long as you know what you're doing, that's just a, that's a very good start anyway. It's true, and, and even though some of the, the sort of front, um, the, the, the sort of the, um, some of the package, like for example, MLWin, Copulas, um, on, on on the face value, they, they, they look like very intuitive, but actually on the back runner is, is all MCMC methods. So <laughs> um, I think including uh, MI for the reasons you mentioned. So um, most of the methods in this area, they, they Bayesian, yeah, by definition. 